In this video, we're going to use network models or graph models to look at the centralization, the amount of hierarchy in the organizational chart. So we're going to create a network graph to show that org chart. And then we can analyze the org chart by looking at the centrality. How many contacts does an individual within the organization have? How many people do you have to go between to contact or send information to someone else? How many people are you in contact with? <clears throat> how long is the path to get to one person or another? So when we look at a highly centralized organization, we see something like uh, what you see on the right. That is, we have a person in charge who communicates down uh, to management and management uh, communicates down to employees within their department. And there's not a lot of interaction between departments uh, or even between managers in a highly centralized organization. In comparison, a very flat organization, everybody's in contact with everybody else. So there has a high degree of contacts. There's low between this. You don't have to go between other people to contact someone else. Uh, and it's not a long path to order to contact someone. So we can look at then building a network graph and then analyzing the level of centrality. <laughs> to create these network graphs, what we need to do is we need to create some nodes and some edges. So nodes are going to be circles representing individuals or events, and edges are going to be the connections between the nodes. That is, this is the communication that is happening between people or movement of goods or materials. If we're looking, for example, at an airport, uh, we might uh, be looking at the, where the planes fly from airport to airport. So when it comes to these edges, these connections between nodes, there can be weights, the strength of the connection, how many times they contact a particular person, what percentage of the time they travel that direction, and so on. Or, and there can be directionality as well. And so when we're looking at org charts, we're focused on directionality, how does information flow? In a highly centralized organization, the information flows down from the top, and that directionality matters when we look at centrality. So what we're going to do first is we are going to <clears throat> create a network graph or an org chart in Python. And if you want to work along with us, either go to drstephpowers.github.io slash BIA, and we're looking at graph, I'm sorry, go to enterprise analytics because we're looking at organizations. Or alternatively, you can go directly into uh, drstephpowers.github.io slash management in Python. And what we're doing is we are looking at um, our um, org charts. Okay, so once we are here, what we're going to do is we're going to import network X as NX and NumPy as NP. We're also going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt in order to create some um, graphs. So let's import all those. Now, in previous videos related to network models, we created the network graph by having a table that had the source of information, the target of the information, the direction, and the weight. And we had that table, and from there it developed a network graph. If we're using these from org charts, then likely what we're going to be doing is creating that network graph by hand to look the way we want it to look. So for example, let's suppose I want to create this org chart here where I have the CEO and then we have department A and department B. Department A has a team A lead and has staff member A and B. Department B has a team lead and staff member C, D, and E. So notice that we have uh, directionality to this. We can even add um, text to the arrows to specify. And so what we're going to do is create this in using network X. So we're going to call this graph G and it's net X dot DI graph. Okay, so we're going to create this graph ourselves. To create this graph ourselves, we first have to identify how many nodes, how many people are involved in our org chart. So in this particular org chart, we have our CEO and our two team leads. So there we have three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So what we're going to do is we're going to say nodes equals NP. That's the numpy as NP. 
create a range from zero to eight. Remember that's zero up to, but not including eight, but that's still eight people because the first person is labeled zero. And we're gonna do that to a list, okay? So then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna take G, that's our blank graph at the moment. We wanna add nodes from this nodes that we've just created. So we are going to add the nodes to our graph and there's going to be eight nodes. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to specify who each of these nodes talk to, okay? So what's often helpful is to do the labeled section first so that you put names to these different numbers. So I, person zero is gonna be the CEO, person one is going to be team A lead, person two is gonna be team B lead, three staff A, four staff B, and so on. By putting those labels out there first, then that helps you in terms of your froms, because this is going to be a line, an edge, from CEO to team A lead. That's what this is, zero to one. Then we need to connect CEO to team B lead, okay? So that's gonna be zero to two. And then we need to connect team A lead with, as we look at the finished graph, staff A and staff B. So staff A is number three and staff B is four, so one to three and one to four. And then we have team B lead, which is number two. So two is going to direct staff C and D and E. So you see the two, five, two, six, two, seven. The next here is that if we're building this graph by hand, then we also probably want to specify the position so these nodes are nicely spread out. So notice here we want these so we can read all the labels and see what's happening. The easiest way to do this is to kind of pick one of these, either the top or the bottom, and set a location for it. So in this particular case, if you think about this from zero to infinity here, and zero to infinity this direction, I can pick a location for the CEO. So I happened to pick a location that was 1010. Okay, so at least got me started. So I pick the CEO is at location 1010. So if you think about this as a grid of rows and columns, it's 10 over and 10 up. Now, everything else is relative to that. So I want team A lead and team B lead to be below that and then to the left and the right. Well, the first number is the x-axis, that's horizontal, and the second number is the vertical axis. So first we wanna do is we want to make sure vertically that team A lead and team B lead are below the CEO. So you can pick a number below, maybe go down in increments of two or three, however you want. I went down here by two and a half and you can adjust it after the fact if it's not the way you want it spaced. And then I wanna go a little bit to the left, so a number less than 10, so here's my 7.5, 7.5 and a number to the right of 10, so that's why this is 12.5, 7.5. That gives me these three. Now, I wanna put these other ones below it. So I had this one at a height of 7.5, which means these need to be below. And I want them all to be relatively at the same level. So I'm gonna pick the same Y number for all five of these, and then we simply need to spread them apart on the X axis. So since team A is at 7.5, 7.5, I need to put number three, which is staff A, a little to the left. So lower and to the left, that's my number there. And I can make these different. You'll notice that I didn't do a particularly good job because the distance between here and here is two and a half, and the distance between here and here is only one and a half. If that, what do I have? 7.5 and six, one and a half. So you could do a better job of spacing by picking numbers that are increments as you go down. But notice the six, six makes this down to the left of this one here. And this nine, six makes this down and to the right of this one here. And then with this one here at 12 and a half, seven and a half, what I can do is put one to the left. So that's 11 and down, so it's six. And then I can put ones, I'm gonna shift it over to the right a bit. So I have two here that are to the right of it, but still down. So you see how I've laid it out. So they're all in the same Y, which is the second number. And then I've spread them out in terms of the X. That's what I've created here. Now, this here, NX draw network X is going to draw G. That's going to be um, your nodes and edges, so that's your edge list. We specified our positions, we specified our labels. 
We're doing arrows. If it's non-directional, you would say false, but we have arrows because it is directional. And uh, our node shapes here, now you can change that, the colors, the shapes, or you can leave it as is. Now, I wanna add, particularly to this chart, this little A here and this little B to indicate that these are different departments or maybe their locations. So what I'm adding here with this NX draw underscore network edge labels is that I am adding an additional label A and B and you need to specify which edge it goes on. So this is going from the edge that is zero to one and the zero to two. And so that's what it says here is the edge label zero to one is gonna be labeled A and the edge that is zero to two is gonna be labeled B. That's these little ones here. If you remove this whole row here of code, then all you're doing is removing the labels here and it looks more like it does down here. So I can run this. It makes the graph that you can see there. Okay, and we have created an org chart. In our next video, we're going to analyze this org chart for levels of centrality. But before we do that, can you create this same chart but add two people that are above the CEO? So after we finish analyzing the centrality of this graph, we want to identify analyze the centrality of a slightly different graph where we have two other people who are above the CEO. So maybe they're two board members who then the CEO has to report to and the board members give direction to the CEO. So see if you can add to this model two more people. Pause the video and then check back. All right. Let's see here. To create the org chart that has two more people, we'll call them board one and board two, then what we're going to need to do is change the range of nodes to be 10 instead of eight. Uh, the code here for adding the nodes is gonna be the same. We need to add edges from, and so we are going to shift all of these to allow for the fact that we now have these additional people, zero and one. And so what we have is we put them in front, uh, so everybody's been renumbered. And that means we can keep the previous locations that we have, positions that we had, so you can see the 10 through six, but they need to be renumbered so that they are uh, person two through nine. And then we have added in terms of above them. So here we have that they are above, so above 10 is 12 and a half, so that's higher. And then we want to the left, so that's less than 10, 7.5. And we want to the right, so that's 12.5. So we've added these two additional positions. We wanna make sure that our edges represent the connections. So we have our new zero person is going to, um, we need to connect here. And so we just need to make sure it matches the labels, right? So we have, um, the CEO to the board, we have the CEO to board two, we have the CEO to the team leads. Uh, and so in this case, based on the way we phrase this with two to zero and two to one instead of zero to two and, and one to two, when you create your graph, we actually have the CEO dictating to the board, okay? So if the direction flow is this way, then we need to make sure that we write it as two to zero and two to one. If it's going the other way, then we need to switch these because direct directionality is going to matter when we look at centrality because it does matter which direction uh, the information is moving in terms of how many people you have to go in between and who has the most influence. I wrote it the other direction because as we'll see in our next video, when we look at eigenvector centrality, the influence you have, if we switch them the other way, the CEO then influences everybody, uh, and so they have the, um, the key uh, eigenvector centrality measure. So which way you want the arrows to flow, and that's gonna impact centrality, depends on your edges, from which one to which one. The rest of our code is essentially the same uh, as the graph that we've just seen.